Propaganda, information used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view, was one of the most powerful weapons during World War I. World War I was the first time in history when the world was in total war, so the justified point of views between the different nations heavily influenced the general public. Posters were the most common form of propaganda, as they were both visually appealing and easy to reproduce. These posters inspired you to enlist to pick up the flag and support your country. Poster use during World War I was the height of means of communication than any other time of history. The average person would pass by posters on the sides of buildings, on the windows of homes, or in their workplaces. As time passed, the governments of the different nations realized the importance of audience involvement. Other forms of propaganda, such as music, film, and speeches, were also used to spread information about the war. Because posters could easily be spread amongst the public, production was desired. The majority of posters were made in the United States, enough to where the U.S. government formed a public information committee in 1917 titled the Division of Pictorial Publicity. This committee helped issue information to sustain American morale, administer voluntary press, and develop propaganda abroad. One man in specific, George Creel, was known to be a mastermind in creating several pieces of American propaganda. Under the direction of Creel, the United States also produced patriotic speeches and songs to spread more information and appeal to more people. Creel also created the Four Minute Men, a group of 75,000 men who gave hundreds of war-related speeches to union halls, churches, lumber camps, and synagogues. Motion picture theater orchestras were also played for audiences. America tried to avoid conflict with the Allied forces. During the initial breakout of World War, President Woodrow Wilson tried his best to have America remain neutral. Eventually, however, several quarrels with the German Navy initiated the United States' entrance into the war. Germany declared that the safety of any ship passing through the war zone around Britain would be in danger of their attack. The William P. Fry, a private American carrier ship, was sunk by German forces, infuriating President Wilson. The Germans continued to make three more surprise attacks on the United States, even killing a few Americans in the process. Wilson finally declared war on Germany on April 6, 1917. When America first entered the war, the country needed to build their fairly small army, recruiting, drafting, and training troops, and producing the equipment needed to fight. In order to do this, money was needed. Financial contributions were made using war bonds, loans made to the federal government that would later need to be paid with slight interest. The British used iconic figures to emphasize a point to promote patriotism. These figures could possibly be real people shown as mythological forms as national heroes. They could also be from myths and folklore. For example, the British Bulldog poster showed nations joining together against a common threat. The posters reminded the people what they were fighting for. Posters in Britain also encouraged British men to enlist in the war and British women to take the men's jobs while they go off to war. Britain began the war by trying to cut off Germany's notoriously strong undersea communication cables. They spread word about their objective through a secret organization known as Wellington House in September 1914. Wellington House printed its own newspaper, the War Pictorial, featured graphics and drawings. The newspaper eventually became widespread across the world, running at a circulation of 500,000 copies in a total of 11 languages. Aside from posters, pamphlets were produced by the War Propaganda Bureau, such as the report on alleged German outrages, which focused on the violent acts committed against citizens by the German army. Cinema newsreels, newspaper articles, and speeches delivered at public meetings were also used as forms of propaganda. British propaganda expressed ideas of quick victory, moral and religious duty, employment and learning of new skills, and protection for people's families. However, the main reason for British propaganda was to provoke anti-German feeling. The German army during World War I was already pretty built up and feared by other nations. They played their use of propaganda slightly differently than the rest of the nations, as they kept less emphasis on its usage and censored what was said in it to make sure the civilian population heard positive comments on the nation. Nonetheless, German posters featured their nation's epic cultural mythology. 
German mythology was perfectly fitted for military use as it involved powerfully connotated figures such as dragons, Valkyries, and Siegfried-like heroes. Along with this, the Germans heavily employed the Wolf Telegraph Borough to internationally spread their nation's propaganda. A large part of France's propaganda was through newspapers that were run by the military. All countries would create newspapers that recounted the stories of the war according to each army. Posters were also, like many other countries, a big part of France's propaganda. One French poster depicts a German soldier biting the earth, which helped to building the image that Germans were barbaric. One method that France used for recruitment was depicting their national bird, the Gaelic rooster, battling the German national bird, the Prussian eagle. The poster would read, help the Gaelic cock defeat the Prussian eagle. This was meant to evoke a sense of patriotism from the citizens so that they would join the war. They made many posters in which Germany was represented by an eagle with soldiers battling it. All in all, propaganda was both similar and different in each of the nations. All of the sources of propaganda from all of the nations gave messages of the same things, such as enlistment, patriotism, opinions on the enemy, donations, employment, and rationing. The difference was in the way the nations depicted their message. Whether it be in the varying mediums, such as posters versus films versus music, or the different artwork styles, like mythological characters versus real humans. No matter the case, the usage of propaganda during World War I let out information to people that, in the end, affected the public.